Good morning. Welcome to the August 24th, 2022 Board of Sanitary Commissioners meeting for the Muncie Sanitary District. I hope everyone is well. I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask if you'd rise with me and follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for that. Uh, roll call excused absences. There are none. Uh, all four commissioners are present today, so we have a quorum. We'll proceed with our agenda. Uh, moving right into the consideration of the August 10th, 2022 board meeting minutes. These were sent out previously by uh, Maggie. Thank you very much. Nice job. Anybody wishing to amend? If not, I would accept a motion to approve the meeting minutes as submitted. I move to approve. Second. A motion by Tanya, second by Adam. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. The meeting minutes are approved. Next on the agenda is the consideration of the register of claims, uh, totaling $2,021,258.32. These were also sent out previously with some explanation. Uh, anybody wishing to clarify any of the claims for the benefit of the public? I'd be happy to. Thank you. Um, on page 6 of 15, we paid $208,350 to APGN Inc. for a turbo blower, and that's for the uh, treatment facility. Then on page 12 of 15, just highlighting some work that Greeley and Hansen has done for us, uh, we paid $15,655.61 for work uh, pertaining to the Walnut Street sewer design. And we paid $9,649.12 for uh, the Altshire work. Uh, on page 14 of 15, the largest claim in this pay period uh, is to Bowen Engineering. We paid them $1,183,400. And that's for several projects. That's uh, actually bond payment, or excuse me, payment number 13 for a lot of the work that they're doing for us. And I think those are the only ones that I wanted to highlight. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else wishing to comment on the claims? No. Nope, thank you. Me either. If not, I'll accept a motion to approve the claims as submitted. So moved. Second. A motion by Adam, second by Tanya. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. Claims are approved. Uh, next on the agenda is old business. Any, there's nothing on the agenda. Uh, any old business you want to bring up, Tony? No, nothing for me. Thank you, Adam. No, David. No, none for me. Uh, next on the agenda is our district administrator update from John Barlow. Good morning, John Barlow, district administrator. Uh, just got two uh, update items. Uh, one is just a follow-up on the uh, Jackson Street. Ongoing, the progress is being made. Uh, we appreciate the patience of everyone on the detours. It probably is still going to be another two weeks, hopefully, no more than that. I think I said four weeks at the last meeting, so hopefully, we're two weeks down and two weeks to go to get that finished up. Uh, if, I, uh, if we have any more specific updates, uh, we'll let everyone know. Uh, but. Uh, that is still ongoing work. They're, they're moving fairly well on that. And uh, folks out of Drum Edition, just an update for them. We uh, started surveying this week out there at Drum in anticipation of a drainage project that is yet to be designed specifically on what we're going to do, but we are going to do something. And so the next step was to get the survey done. That's happening currently. Uh, so just wanted to let the folks know out there. Questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, John. Any questions or comments, Tonya? Nothing from me. Good. Adam? No, thanks, John. David? No, thank you, John. No, I'm good. Thank okay. you. Next on the agenda, uh, we have a contractor update from Tom Noble. Okay. There we go. Okay. It's a good idea. 
Breaker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom Noble, Assistant Superintendent and Construction Crew Manager for Sewer Maintenance. Um, just for everyone's knowledge, we do run an in-house construction crew. Uh, it's a five-person crew plus myself. Um, I am out on the job site with them 95% of the time as a functioning working member of that crew. Um, our primary focus are sanitary laterals, mains, storm inlets, manhole rehabs, replace, sinkholes, um, assist in rain events, and we plow and remove snow when needed. Um, we have faced some challenges this year. Three of our five members uh, took other positions. Uh, May and June, we lost one in May, two in June. So we did have to kind of hire some new people, get them up to speed. Um, we've done 107 jobs up to this point. Uh, I think we was at 130 last year. Um, the ARP paving really threw a bunch more work our way um, this spring and into the summer. And now we are preparing for the 2022 paving stuff. Um, that's about all I got. Some of the highlights, I mean, we did Briar, Maplewood, Pauline. We're on Locust. Uh, we did Locust and Yale a couple weeks ago. Uh, Locust and Berkeley we're currently working on. Um, had some sinkholes pop up after the July 17th rain event. Uh, we've took care of them. So I can answer any questions if you guys have any. Thank you, Tom. Tanya? Uh, just a comment and perhaps an opportunity for you to address. Um, I've seen some comments or heard some comments from people really uh, applauding our work. You know, once we uh, do your construction work and repave it and the street is nice, but then they're wondering why didn't we continue on either down the same street or a, a street connected and so forth. So will you explain to the public so what happens? And we have we don't have very much to do with, with what gets paved. So generally, at the first of the year when the paving list is produced, um, we send out we send our sewer trucks, and that comes from the Board of Works. Adam would know more about that. Um, so we send our sewer trucks out. They clean. Um, once those areas are clean, manholes, lines, uh, we pass it off to engineering. Engineering then cameras it, inspects it, uh, writes, writes up jobs for what needs fixed. If it's something in the scope of work that our in-house crew can do, then we do it. If it's something that needs a contractor where it's out of our scope or out of our range, um, then we bid that job out. So where we start and where we stop kind of dictates on what's bad, what, what infrastructure needs replaced, um, but it also has to do with what's being paved and what's being repaired because um, we're going from one job to the next uh, we're doing anywhere from four to six jobs a week depending on how much is to be done in that area uh, the job we're on now we're probably out there three or four days and that's kind of a long time for us to be on a job site usually we're in and out yeah so i think the the message that we need to convey is that we're fixing a problem Mm -hmm. or we're addressing a situation yes. and we're going to correct that but so we don't have to dig a brand new paved road correct. that's that's what we're trying to avoid we're trying to be proactive here um, replace repair uh, maybe even add sometimes we've added inlets in, in areas where we know there's been flooding or we see where water is puddled or pooled on the side of the road um, and we try to you know remedy that with adding an inlet or or whatever we can do, maybe um, change the slope of the ground if it's in the right of way off the edge of the road where the water will actually get to the to the inlet to take the storm water. Very good. Thank you. Well, Tanya. Mm -hmm. Adam. Yeah. Uh, Tom, you're kind of the one who's the primary beneficiary of our agreement between MSD and <laughs> you know, just just let us know if it's still working for you, if it's, you know, going away. Uh, I, I kept, I've kept them busy the last couple of weeks. So, um, yes, it's 100% it's, it's working. Good. Um, so what Adam's talking about is the, the MOU you guys agreed to where they're going to do some concrete work for us or some uh, asphalt patching. Anything that we know is going to get paved, we usually pour to surface. That way, um, depending on when the paving company is going to get there, we don't want humps in the road. I think we had that issue a couple of years ago. We've kind of learned our lesson. Um, anything that's not on the paving list where it's just a general repair, uh, the street department, and they've been proactive. I mean, they, I've sent an email out to Donnie, the crews are out there the next day. Sometimes even before we pull the barricades up, they're out there patching our road cuts. So yes, it's working very well. Thank you. Good. I'm glad. And, uh, I will expand a little bit on why projects don't always go as far as people think they are. Generally people see something yellow out on their street and they're like, oh, they're going to pave everything, but you know, uh, as we know, especially and department heads know, there's a finite budget for everything. Um, we have 677 lane miles in the city of Muncie, 314 road miles. Average cost to pave a road mile is about 
anywhere three hundred, five hundred thousand dollars per. Uh, there's just never enough money. So there always has to be a logical termini to every project. They have to start somewhere. They have to end somewhere. Uh, for sewer projects, those start points are typically manhole to manhole. End points are the same. Uh, MSD always does a really good job of basically putting the project out so that it ends at a logical terminus, but they have to stop somewhere and we got plenty of problems, so it's usually road end to road end. That's what we try to do when I put together the paving projects and same for John Anderson, same for Tom when his guys are out there. There's always some kind of logical termini. Good. That's all I have. Thank, thank you, Adam. David? Oh, thank you. What do you have, Dave? Thank you. Uh, Tom, appreciate the update. You mentioned uh, manpower and the struggles with your turnover. Is your department fully staffed right now? Uh, I was going to mention that if you didn't. So uh, currently right now we are down a sewer driver. Um, we just pulled that posting in, in department. We have to go through the protocol in department district-wide. It's district-wide. It started this morning. Um, and currently we are down a construction crew member um, that was just posted this morning in, ha in, in department. So it'll run its course three days in department, then three days district-wide, and then, uh, and that policy is set by the handbook. So that's, that we're following the protocol um, so we can hopefully get those positions filled. Thank you. And the sewer driver, uh, that's a CDL? That is, that is a CDL position, yes. So um, the construction job, uh, we prefer CDL. Um, but we kind of prefer some general construction knowledge if you don't have your CDL. Uh, I worked with John and Kaylee, and we kind of, we kind of, when we had the turnover earlier this year, we kind of changed the job description a little bit um, because to have somebody with construction experience and a CDL, we wasn't getting those kind of applicants. So we kind of modified it to kind of fit our needs a little more um, so we could get the right personnel in there to hit the ground running. Gotcha. And, uh, you mentioned uh, earlier that there were 130 jobs done in the calendar year 2021. And if, you've done if my memory serves me correctly, yeah, I was right around the 130 mark, and we are at 107 now. We're on our 108th job right now. Holy crap. Wow. Yeah, great job. Thank you. Um, aside from the manpower that you're short right now, which you're l looking to fill, are there other resources or, there, or is there anything that you need from this board? No. I mean, just continued support. I mean, that's it. Okay. I mean, John and I briefly talked at the first of the year about, you know, maybe expanding this. Um, I don't know what his thoughts are. Mine right now would be because of the turnover and manpower. Uh, I think one experienced crew is better than two inexperienced crews. Um, but it is something that I would, I would love to sit down and talk about in the future of maybe adding, even if it's a smaller scale crew where they're just doing like casting swap outs, um, manhole rehabs, you know, something like that where it was maybe a two or three man crew. That would be something that we maybe could talk about in the future. Okay. Okay. I appreciate it. Anything else you want the board to know? No, I'm good. Thanks. Appreciate sir. it. Keep up the good work and thank tell you. your team thank you. Thank you. I will. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank okay. you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda under new business, we don't have anything listed. Uh, any new business, Tanya, you want to raise? No. Adam, David? No. no. None from me either. Any additional board topics, Tanya? Yeah, I think it's important to note that um, we're celebrating a wonderful milestone, and Mr. John Barlow is celebrating starting his 40th year with the Sanitary District. And I think uh, MSD, the citizens of Muncie, were all very lucky that he said yes to serving the citizens for 40 years. So thank you, John. We appreciate all that you do. Thank you for saying so. Yeah, you're a terrific leader for MSD. Thanks. Thank you, Tanya. Mm -hmm. Adam? Uh, I concur. So 40 years ago, John started with a mop in the basement of the uh, wastewater control facility, and look how far he's come. <laughs> <laughs> Only one way up from the basement. Well, that's true, but. Yeah. Anything else, Adam? No. David, any additional board topics? Oh, just again with John, we go back to Muncie Northside High School. <laughs> so congratulations, John. Appreciate it. So, John, 40 years with MSD, so you were, what, six when you started with <laughs> MSD? Yeah. Uh, the walls were not in place at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted to bring up a couple of things. At our last meeting, we had a couple of folks approach and make public comment that uh, we, we appreciated and valued their the comments that they made. But I wanted to address a few things and clarify. Uh, the first person that made a, made a comment was about uh, some drainage issues that they were having 
And there were some beliefs about the infrastructure in that area that after investigation by engineering and, and the team ended up to not be accurate. Uh, however, the investigation is ongoing and uh, MSD is considering uh, improving the infrastructure uh, that goes under Meeker that would tie into the Burlington that would maybe help in a, in a significant rain event like we had on July 17th, but likely not completely cure due to the sheeting effect that, that happens in that low-lying area. So uh, I just wanted to make that comment that, uh, you know, we appreciate people bringing those things to us and we are continuing to investigate. The second person that approached uh, made a comment about billing and payments and we uh, appreciated those comments, also took them seriously, did some investigation and I just wanted to assure the public that the Muncie Sanitary District is paying our customers in a timely manner. Uh, if there's latency or, or lack of responsiveness somewhere else in that chain as you move from Tier 1 to Tier 2 or Tier 2 to Tier 3, uh, that's outside of our purview. Uh, however, if there, somebody believes there is something we can do about it, we would for sure like to know about it and we can ask questions. But uh, all the investigation that we did proved that uh, Muncie Sanitary District was uh, paying in a timely manner. Um, also, I'd like to update uh, everybody in the audience and the public on our uh, ongoing uh, negotiations with the Delaware Regional Wastewater District. Uh, they are our largest customer and our largest wholesale customer. That contract is up in 2023, and we're working on a long-term agreement with them. Uh, I believe it's moving along very well. Uh, a lot of good questions and answers uh, going back and forth. I'm learning throughout the process, so I appreciate uh, the input from Delaware Regional and everybody that's supporting it. And, you know, hopefully uh, by the next meeting, uh, I can, you know, report that we're making better progress and we're, and we're close to a tentative agreement. But uh, I believe that we're, that we're really, really close and things are going well. So I'm pleased and proud to report that. Other than that, I don't have any additional board topics. Uh, we've reached the point on our agenda where we would take public comment. Anybody wishing to make comment can approach the podium and uh, state your name and address for the record, and you'll have three minutes. My name's Dave Osborne, uh, 5445 West Petty, Muncie. Uh, I retired from the Muncie Sanitary District some years ago after 34 years of service. I was the director of engineering prior to John over here taking my place. Um, when I retired, my wife and I uh, were both insured by the sanitary district under the, I think it was Blue Cross at the time. And when I became eligible for uh, Medicare, I was forced, she wasn't covered anymore, she was taken off of the district and I had to go out and get me, a, get her a supplement. And we've been taking care of that ever since. Well, I recently received notice that the supplement for her is going up again. And I thought before I go out and look for a new service, I'd check with this board. Uh, a couple of years ago, I became aware that other employees who retired after me had uh, been allowed to maintain insurance for their spouses as well. At that time, I asked Melanie if I could do that with my wife and bring her back on. And she said, no, that wasn't possible. I didn't pursue it beyond that. Uh, but I thought I'd give it one shot here and see if you would consider reinstating her on the sanitary district's insurance. As I understand it, uh, retirees are still allowed now for their wives or husbands, whatever, spouse, okay. to be covered. So thank you, Mr. Osborne. And just so I'm clear on your request, you're asking if the sanitary district could reinstate your wife on, on the sanitary district's insurance. Right. And your understanding is that folks that retired after you were allowed to do that. Right. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. but And I wasn't aware of that until a couple of years ago when they changed. We had a mandatory meeting in this auditorium on insurance mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. Might have been more. I don't know. And uh, at that time when I was told she could not be put back on, I mean, she was on it for five years. It's not like I'm asking to put her on now and then she was never on. She was on for five years until we were forced to remove her. Okay. We will inquire and someone will reach out directly to you. Thank you, Mr. Osborne. Thank you. Uh-huh. Anybody else wishing to make 
comment. Rick Yenser, former newsman, author, and I've got business in Muncie. A group has been looking at how the city is spending their American Relief Plan money. We came across a uh, claim that the city approved to the Sanitary District for some $7 million uh, last week. And some people want to know why uh, one government is trying to bail out another government with money it was supposed to go for the people. I think the city took another $6 million and bailed itself out when, again, this STEMI money, as we call it, should have been gone to the people. Uh, it was earmarked for infrastructure, and I heard talk here today about the district paving streets over utility work. But, you know, a, dis a government that has a tax base uh, a utility and even a gas pump. I'm wondering why you need more money. Um, and related to that, with taxes coming up, uh, I've had people, homeowners, business owners, wonder why their taxes went up this year in the Muncie area, uh, anywhere from 5 to 10 percent. And it's easy to count because some schools and governments have spent money they don't have, like borrowing money, like for a sanitation garage, uh, this stadium that's coming online that the schools are doing and a variety of other things uh, where you're in imposing debt over the next 20 years for property owners. Um, and a colleague of mine pointed out to me too that uh, the district isn't doing enough to recycle cardboard. I mean, you can just go down any street and see boxes everywhere because that's all we get anymore from Amazon, uh, FedEx boxes and the cardboard recycling effort here in this community has kind of slowed down when Rock 10 was sold. I know they still do big commerce, but I'm not sure about you or others and how you're going to solve uh, keeping cardboard back in the stream to produce more cardboard. Those are just some of the few things that I've heard and I know. Uh, and again, with the tax rates for next year coming up, I would hope you don't raise property taxes anymore in this community. Thank you, Mr. Yenser. Sure. Anybody else wishing to make public comment you can approach and you've got three minutes. Seeing none, our next regular scheduled meeting will be Wednesday, September 7th, 2022, 1130 a.m. right here in City Hall Auditorium. I would accept a motion to adjourn today's meeting. So moved. Second. Motion by Tanya, second by Adam. All those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. Meeting adjourned. Everyone have a safe day. Mm -hmm.